I would like to call the Prince William County School Board meeting to order. First, we'd like to do the approval of the closed session agenda. Mr. Chairman. A motion is in order. Thank you. Um, Mr. Chairman, I move that the Prince William County School Board approve the closed session agenda as recommended. Do I have a second? Yes. Discussion? Jesus. Please vote. Excuse me, I Diane Ralston. Sorry. Vote is five yes, one not present vote, Ralston, one absent, Trenum, motion passed. <laughs> Diane, is your thing working or no? Yeah. Okay. Well, that's fine. We're ready to go. She's here. Okay. I'll take, uh, uh, moving on to the motion to enter closed session, a motion is order. Can I have a motion? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I move that pursuant to Virginia Code 2.2-3711, the Prince William County School Board in a closed session for the following reason. One, to discuss the appointment and release of specific employee, employees under Virginia Codes 2.2-3711A, 1, and 8. Two, to discuss and consult with legal counsel regarding requests for relig religious exemption pertaining to specific students under Virginia Codes 2.2-3711A, 2, and 8. Three, to review and discuss staff with staff and division counsel specific personnel issues under Virginia Codes 2.2-3711, 1, and 8. Four, to consult with division counsel regarding actual or probable litigation regarding particular school property under Virginia Code 2.2-37117. Five, to consult with division counsel regarding the specific legal agreement and the legal rights of specific students which, which matters require the advice of legal, legal counsel under Virginia Codes 2.2-37112, 2, 7, and 8, and Six, to discuss with the division counsel and staff and receive legal advice regarding specific legal matters under Virginia Codes 2.2-3711 and 8. Do I have a second? Yes, I second. Uh, second by Diane Ralston of the Neabsco District. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you very much. Very nice. um, discussion, please vote. The vote is six yes. The Prince William County School Board will now enter closed session and return to open session in approximately one hour. Session. Um, we do have one closed session action item that we need to vote on. Debbie, do you have that up? How do I refresh? Okay, yeah. It's in here. See it? Can I have a motion to um Approval of the um, action agenda item. Mr. Chairman. Yep. I move that the Prince William County School Board authorize the chairman at large to enter into a consent agreement on behalf of the school board with the Environmental Protection Agency. Do I have a second? Mr. Chairman, I'll second. Oh, good. Seconds by Mr. Deutsch. Uh, discussion? Please vote. <clears throat>
Vote is eight yes, unanimous, motion passed. Moving on to the adoption of the closed session consent agenda, motion is in order. Mr. Chairman. Yes, Ms. Jesse. I move that the Prince William County School Board approve the closed session and consent agenda as recommended. Do I have a second? Mr. Chairman. Ms. Williams. A second. Discussion, please vote. The vote is eight yes, unanimous, motion passed. Moving on to closed session certification, a motion is in order. Mr. Chairman. Ms. Jesse. I move that pursuant to Virginia Code 2.2-3712, the closed session of the Prince William County School Board meeting of September 5th, 2018 be certified by adopting the following resolution. Now therefore it be resolved that the Prince William County School Board hereby certifies to the best of each member's knowledge, one, only public business matters lawfully exempted from opening meeting requirements were discussed in the closed meeting to which this certification resolution applies, and two, only such public business matters as were identified in the motion convened in the closed meeting were heard and discussed or considered by the school board. Do I have a second? A second. Mr. Deutsch seconded discussion. Please vote. So as we're waiting for that, I'm gonna move into the um, presentation 1001 called Positively Prince William County Schools. I'm gonna start off the business of this meeting and future ones with a response to community requests to hear more about the good things that Prince William County Public Schools are accomplishing. There's plenty of information out there at the school and community level, but it's not surprising that it can get lost, especially in the challenges and details of the, that the board deals with at these meetings. So we are working with schools and our communications teams to spotlight a few of the good news items at these meetings and elsewhere with the term positively Prince William County Schools. It is intended to focus on how we're preparing our students academically and socially for success in college and careers. You've already seen it used on the web and social media to help showcase accomplishments, like the fact that last year's graduating seniors earned a record $74 million in scholarships. We believe the students' accomplishments is a product of great work by our teachers and counselors, and that makes positively Prince William County Schools. So we will be starting our meetings by meeting people who can testify to things that are positively Prince William County Schools in the view of our board members. Starting this year with the opening of the Independence non-traditional school that is designed to meet the needs and fuel the success of people who learn differently, that's positively PWCS, the school combines New Directions, New Dominion, and Pace East that have already been helping non-traditional learners for years. And now it'll be giving them a new access to resources and opportunities to ensure student success. That's really positive news. So with that introduction in mind, let me introduce two very brief presentations that will give you a better idea of things positively Prince William County. These aren't PowerPoints or data downloads. They're stories from people who made a difference and from those that helped. We'll start with a recent uh, Prince William County School graduate and a staff member who make a difference for her and many students like her. Um, this is from the student staff. Um, thank you and congratulations to Travis. Uh, well, go ahead. I'll <laughs> have you guys introduce yourselves and, and tell us a little bit about your All right, so experience. my name is Travis Graham. Um, my experience at Grad Point Academy was a life-changing experience. Uh, coming into high school, I didn't take my freshman year very seriously, so I was doing things I wasn't supposed to do. I skipped school. I didn't ask my teachers for help when I know I needed it. Grad Point Academy gave me the opportunity I needed so that I could succeed. With that being said, going into Grad Point, um, they helped me out. The teachers and staff there were absolutely amazing. <laughs> they were wonderful, nice to me. And I just want to say thank you guys so much for all the support and supporting me all the way to the end. And without them, I wouldn't be able to have a high school diploma and a scholarship, so <laughs> thank you. Thank you. 
I'm Dara Duggar, and I serve as the Director of Office of Student Management and Alternative Programs. And I have with me on this evening the program coordinator, Leslie Johnson, and one of the teachers of the program, Joy Hill. And we are excited about students like Travis. And we've worked really hard to ensure that students have an opportunity. The image you see there on the wall, on, on the screen, is of the grit wall. It represents the 254 courses completed this summer. So students were hard at work, and we are proud of their accomplishments. Additionally, over time, the Graduation Academy has grown from the enrollment of 73 to 169, and so we are excited about where this program is going and the opportunities that our students have. So thank you for this presentation. Thank you, and congratulations, Travis Graham, and to you, Ms. Duggar, for all the um, pro, all that the program continues to do. So continuing along the lines of student success through the efforts of our schools and staff, I want to introduce someone who has already spoken at our Triple E conference. At Triple E, Kristen Martin recited a poem she wrote about her experience at Pace West. She first delivered it when she graduated from a school this spring, and she's been kind enough to share it with all of you. I think you'll understand why it speaks to the meaning of Positively Prince William. Kristen? Oh, should I just say, uh, stand here? Sure, okay, yes, that'd be sorry. fabulous. Thank okay. you. Why would you go there? Why would you send your child there? Why would you teach there? Why would you give students a second chance there? These are the questions that fill the mouth of many when they ask questions about Pace West. To be honest, Pace West is no magical safe place. To be honest, Pace West is no magical remedy. To be honest, Pace West is no magical wonderland. At Pace West, the baggage of the outside world invades the walls of the school. At Pace West, the words, I hate this place, are more common than thank you. At Pace West, the students and teachers are in a constant battle of tug and war between the past, present, and future. At Pace West, the words, this is useless, has been at the tip of everyone's tongue. But at Pace West, students can learn how to grow as human beings. But at Pace West, students can learn that their past can be the key to their future. But at Pace West, students can learn how to forgive themselves. But at Pace West, students can learn that they are not alone. At Pace West, students deserve to make it past the age 15. At Pace West, students deserve to feel love. At Pace West, students deserve to not feel demonized for their past or future. At Pace West, students deserve to have hope. At Pace West, we are complex. At Pace West, we are trying. At Pace, um, at Pace West, we are beautiful. We need, to, we need schools like Pace West to remind people that education is not one pathway. We need schools like Pace West to remind students that they can hold their future in their hands. We need schools like Pace West to help students discover who they are. Normally, when people ask questions about Pace West, they normally start with why. My answer is, why not? Thank you. I would like to call this meeting of the Prince William County School Board to order, our first meeting of the new school year 2018-2019. Next, I'd like to have the invocation, which will be given by Reverend Charles Lundy of the Ebenezer Baptist Church in Woodbridge. If uh, Pastor Lundy, Dr. Lundy, if you could please come to the, the mic and- uh, Amen. Th <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, my friend. Uh, <clears throat> certainly, we give honor to the Spirit of God and to the people of faith that have assembled and concerned citizens, to Dr. Latif, thank you for inviting me to come tonight and to my dear friend, uh, Miss Lily Jesse, let us pray. Eternal God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you for our gathering this evening. We thank you for the traveling grace and for road mercy. As we begin another school year, we ask for your guidance, your help, your blessings. Guidance, oh God, guide our schools, through a safe and successful school year. We pray your blessings and guidance upon our teachers and faculty and staff as they guide our children to academic excellence and success. Father, we ask your help, help for our schools to achieve victory in the 
training up of our children in the way that they should go, help each teacher to reach each child. And then, Father God, we ask that you would bless our schools through thy presence in each classroom. Bless our children with sharp minds and strong bodies. Keep them academically uh, proficient and uh, 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 safe on the, on the school grounds, oh God. Bless them in the, on the school bus and, and in the classrooms and in the homes, oh God. Bless the homes out of which our children come, oh God. Those that come in need, those that are at risk, uh, calling for help, oh God. We pray your, your presence in the midst of this, these school districts, oh God. That everything that we ask, say, and do in this room, amen, may be uh, 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 promulgated down into the schools and, and become policies by which our children learn and understand what it means to be good citizens and good people of a, of a, of a, of a blessed nation. We thank you for all of these things and these that give up their energy and give up their time and their talent for this uh, a great endeavor. We pray your blessings upon them and upon each one that comes in concern. These things we ask in Jesus' name, and the people of God said amen. God bless all of you. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the next and for the Pledge of Allegiance, do I have a student who would like to lead us? Um, I'm Annabelle Bergeron. I'm a senior at Brentsville District High School and one of the uh, alternates to the student representative. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Anne. Moving on to the approval of the public meeting agenda. A motion is in order. Mr. Chairman, I move that the Prince William County School Board approve the public meeting agenda as recommended. Do I have a second? Mr. Chairman? Yes. Second? Second by Ms. Williams. Do I have any discussion? Please vote. Mm Vote is eight yes, unanimous, motion passed. Thank you. Uh, moving on to the adoption of the consent agenda. A motion is in order. Mr. Chairman, I move that the Prince William County School Board uh, adopt the consent agenda. Do I have a second? Mr. Chairman. Ms. Williams. I second. Ms. Williams, second. Do I have a discussion? Ms. Satterwhite. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just want to recognize the um, memorandum of understanding between the Prince William County Police Department and Prince William County Public Schools and I'm very happy that we are um, making this agreement for our school, um, looking for the correct term to make sure I get it right, um, for our school safety officers. And looking forward to this new pilot program that we've started in cooperation with the Board of County Supervisors and Prince William County Police Department. And very happy that we're taking this step forward. I'm glad that the state law passed so that we can do this. Um, we are going to be utilizing retirees from, Prince William, from Virginia law enforcement. We're not utilizing teachers, we're utilizing, utilizing law enforcement officers who've retired. And I think this is in the best interest of our students in addition to the SRO program we have in place. So I'm very happy that we are putting this on consent agenda and that we finally have it so that we can pass it tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Satterwhite. Uh, Ms. Williams. Um, I just wanted to take a moment to um, recognize, I believe Mr. Eichhorn is in the audience, the uh, principal, one of the principals of the Independence Non-Traditional School. I noticed on here that we uh, are naming the courtyard after uh, Mr. Mallard, and I wasn't sure if we were going to do any more formal recognition than that, but um, just in case I jumped the gun, I'm sorry. But if not, I just wanted to um, say congratulations for that and also just take a moment to uh, extend my thanks again while we were on non-traditional school for its opening and all the, the great work that's been done there. Wonderful, thank you. Um, if no more discussion, please vote. Oh, did someone? Yes, Mr. Deutsch. Um, could, um, 
Rita Goss, explain uh, 1413 through 1416 to us. Just a just a quick just a quick overview of what we're doing here just before we vote. Would you like me to pull it out of consent agenda? No, I just want, I just want to hear from her about it before we uh, vote on it. We've done that before. Uh, understood, but we'd prefer to do consent agenda if you have these questions beforehand. But we'll go ahead, Rita. You want to come? We'll do this quickly. Thank you. Mr. Deutsch, you, I just want to make sure I understood what you were asking about 14.13. Sorry, just want a quick overview of the items 14.13, 14.14, 14, 14, 15, 14, 16. Uh, yes, absolutely. Um, so the three of them, 14.14, 14, 14, 14, 15, and 14, 16, I'll talk about those um, first. Um, that's to um, honor those schools that are following the RAMP model in their counseling program. So those um, schools are being nationally recognized um, for ramping up. And I know we have some folks in the audience, perhaps, um, that are here. So we want to um, recognize um, those counselors and those counseling programs. So that's what that is for tonight. And 1413 is that um, is our participation agreement with um, George Mason and um, the practicum there really offering um, coursework through George Mason and our partnership with them. And so that's what those four items are about tonight. Thank you so much. Great. Any further discussion? If not, please vote. Vote is eight yes, unanimous, motion passed. Thank you. Uh, during this time on the agenda, the student representative and alternates will speak and have an opportunity to introduce themselves and share their interests. I'm proud today to um, introduce to you all our new school um, student representatives to the school board. Sasan Faraj of Patriot High School, Annabelle Bergeron of Brentsville District High School, and Wilfredo Villatoro of Garfield High School. We will start first by um, hearing from Sasan Faraj. Mr. Farage. Awesome. Can everyone hear me? Good? Awesome. All right. Thank you, and good, good evening, everyone. Last year marked history for Prince William County Schools. Kate Arnold, the first ever student representative to the Prince William County School Board, strove to understand the perspective of all students in the county in order to bring student voice to the school board. I have large shoes to fill. However, I will do all that I can to ensure that I follow in her footsteps and more. As said before, my name is Sasan Faraj, and I'm the student representative to the school board for the 2018-19 school year. And I will not take too much time here, but I will quickly go over my overarching plans and goals for the school year. My main goal is to identify the top concerns of the students as they come and assure that the board members are fully aware of them while ensuring that, boards, that the board's perspectives and decisions are understood by the students. Students want to be heard, and I'm more than thrilled to represent all 90,000 of them in the county. I plan to do this by incorporating what Kate did last year with my own plans. Many students do not have the time to watch board meetings or look over the board briefs. Kids who stay after for sports, kids who take multiple advanced classes, kids who have a job, and kids who are in many clubs. For that reason, the alternates and I plan to stay connected to schools via their leadership classes and clubs, such as SALC and SCA, in order to connect with the students. Another way to ensure this will be via an online form. This online form will have four simple questions. What grade are you in? What school do you go to? What is your biggest concern? And why? This is a simple and organized way for students to voice their opinion about the school system while we visit other schools within the county. On the form, it is highlighted that it, is, it was not created on the purpose of making comments on students or staff, and if approved, this form will be on a QR code on flyers within schools. This way, if students have the time, they can quickly scan it via Snapchat or a QR scanner within a f and fill it in within a few minutes. 
I'm looking forward to learning the perspectives of all the students, and I thank the board for allowing me to the opportunity to do so. I'm also looking forward to working with Annabelle and Wilfredo. Students can email me with any questions, comments, and concerns at my Prince William County email, which is, I'll spell it out, F-A-R-A-J-S-A-19 at pwcs-edu.org. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Fraj, Ms. Annabelle. Good evening. My name is Annabelle Bergeron, and I am one of the alternates to the student representative. Tonight, I would like to tell you a little bit about myself, as well as what I hope to achieve as a student representative. As I said before, my name is Annabelle Bergeron, and I'm a senior at Brentsville District High School. I'm president of my class, as well as involved in various organizations and clubs throughout my school, and a varsity swimmer. I've always been involved in my school and community. Having been one of the more outspoken students throughout my career at Prince William County Schools, I know for sure there are many students who may not be as vocal as I. Being a student representative, I hope to give these students a voice. We don't only want the students in our schools to speak up, but every student in the entire county. I hope to reach out and make these students feel connected and important. What they want matters and should be voiced. As a student representative, I want to bring attention to the issues that matter most to the students. Connecting and giving students a platform that's close to them will help create a network, a network of students who want to make a difference. Having a support system that listens and encourages makes standing up at this podium a lot easier. I want to create that feeling of connectivity. This will lead to confidence and motivation throughout the students to do something about the things that are important to them. With the support of my fellow representatives, I hope to achieve a new level of student involvement. Thank you to everyone who has supported us, and thank you to my fellow representatives, Sasan and Wilfredo. I can't wait to share the voices of the students. Thank you for your time, and don't forget, the change begins with you. Thank you, Ms. Bergeron. Wilfredo Villatoro. So, yeah, good evening, every, good evening, everyone. My name is Wilfredo Villatoro. I am a student at Garfield High School in class of 2019. I would like to start by expressing my gratitude towards the school board for the opportunity I have been given by representing nearly 90,000 students in Prince William County Schools as an alternate for this position. It is a great honor for me to work alongside with Annabelle and Suzanne, attempting to empower the voices of students and transforming their ideas into actions. PWCS create leaders for tomorrow, always pursuing to make this county, state, and nation a reflection of how talented and dedicated our students are. Unlike other counties, or our schools are shaped upon the diversity of our backgrounds and the beauty of our differences. Yet we are united by the common pursuit of our dreams, hopes, and goals. Despite our similarities, we're obligated to face multiple problems and obstacles when it comes to integrating our schools. But if something we already know is that it only takes communication to solve these problems. The art of communication is the language of leadership. Giving a voice to students immediately transforms their ideas and discomforts into motivation as they um, as their opinions are delivered into a plan that allows them to solve their own problems uh, within their schools. Creating leadership within um, minorities go from simple dialogues to inspire a massive reaction change that will allow students not only to uh, participate but also to create the future they want to see in their schools. As an alternate, my goal is to focus on minorities, such as English learners, special programs, and non-traditional schools in Prince William County. Sometimes students don't expect us to solve the problem, yet they expect us to give them the satisfaction of that unconditional support. As Hassan just mentioned, our primary goal is to create multiple methods of communication between students and the school board with the use of social media and direct communication. Our second most important goal is to support the students in every school who are natural leaders to create sustainable programs and activities that will inspire students to solve their own problems they face day to day in the schools rather than relying on administration and, um, and teachers. Uh, for students, it's difficult sometimes to understand our policies, and for that reason, our, one of our goals is to expose them to our, our perspective so they can understand um, how policies are made. Finally, I would like to restate my gratitude. Thank you for your time, and let's hope for this year to be one more step towards success. Thank you. Thank you, guys. I think our school system and the students will be well served by your representation. Thank you so much. Moving on to citizen comments on the agenda and non-agenda items. It looks like we have four people that signed up in advance. And uh, 
well, I'm sorry. Three people signed up in advance and one that signed up at the door. Everyone that signed up in advance will have a chance. Everyone will have a chance to speak. If you're still within our 30-minute window, we'll go forward remaining speakers at the door. Listen, I'll call the first few names. Let's call, call everyone up. Thomas Spiziel, Richard Jesse, Riley O'Casey, and Chrissy Falls. Please come on up. You'll have three minutes to speak, and the clerk will keep the time. The lights on the monitor will indicate your progress. The yellow light will signify that you should sum up your position. Red indicates your time is up and you should stop. Please use proper decorum and manners. While at the podium, if you do not do so, you'll be asked to step aside. Please give your name and address for the record when you approach the podium. Our first speaker is Thomas Spezial. Um, please, sir. Yes, my name is Thomas Speciali. Speciali, uh, sorry. That's right. Uh, my name, my address is on record. I have uh, two kids, uh, one in Ashland in second grade and one at Colgan, uh, a, a sophomore at Colgan. Um, I was up here last year at the end of the school year. Uh, soon after the parkland situation and I want to make sure everybody remembers I'm ec ecstatic to hear that after the uh, the mental health counselors etc came forward and I did and many other people did uh, regarding spending money on mental health services for students uh, I'm, I'm ecstatic to hear that that has happened um, as well as um, the uh, retired law enforcement being involved in security in the schools i think these are steps forward in protecting our kids and that's that's our singular responsibility is, is making sure that the school is safe um so i'm going to raise the i'm going to elevate it i'm going to elevate the conversation a little bit this is not just about safety in schools this is about a disenfranchisement of our rights um i want everybody to just try for a minute to suspend your political partisanship and I want you to think for a second what it would feel like is if you had been disenfranchised from your First Amendment rights. If somebody had said, unless you're a certain color or you have a certain amount of money or whatever, you are not allowed to have a political voice in our society. Everybody would be in an uproar, right? Or if the media was actually curtailed or, or, the, or the American people were curtailed on what they could say publicly, everybody would be in an uproar. Well, I would argue that since the 1960s and the 1970s, the American people have been disenfranchised out of fear of their right to bear arms in the United States. And that is being promoted by the education system. You are actually disenfranchising our children through fear by not encouraging and promoting firearm safety. Okay, the Constitution assures that we will have firearms in our country. The Supreme Court has weighed in on this, it's gonna happen. So where in the education system, you teach them about sex education, you see, teach them about their First Amendment rights, you teach them about all their rights, but nobody's teaching them about firearm safety. And so then when you have accidents, you blame the parents. But the reality is, we're not educating them about safety. So in that vein, I wanna remind everybody to overcome that fear. I started a company a couple years ago, or about a year ago fully, called Responsible Firearm Owners of America. And I give free firearm safety training to any Prince William County school member, uh, uh, faculty or staff for free, all the way up to getting the concealed carry permit in the state of Virginia for free to any member of the faculty. This is mostly designed to get teachers to overcome their fear of firearms so that they can start to empower our kids about their rights to bear arms rather than cause fear. Thank you. Mr. Richard Jesse. Guess I won't be on TV. <laughs> my name is Richard Jesse. My address is on file. Good evening. Welcome to our first meeting. Uh, I'd like to say I, I enjoyed the positively uh, portion of the thing. I think that's something we should definitely do. I do want to give a couple of warnings. Uh, sometimes when we do these things, it becomes, well, it's my turn, it's my turn. You have to be careful to make sure that the people who are up here, even when we're doing best practices, these, it is done in a way that the people who really deserve to be up here are and don't just start giving it to anybody because it's my turn. Uh, it's something that I think you want to think about. The other thing I'd like to encourage this board to do is talk about educating our kids. We talk about budgets, we talk about buildings. 
we very seldom talk about the education of our kids. And if we only say positive things about our system, the things that are not being done well continue to be hidden and not transparent to the public. When you looked, there was an article that, uh, on the school board uh, website, SOL passed uh, rates solid division wide. I looked at that, and I happened to look back at the chart, and looking at reading is 79%, math is 76, uh, the highest score was history 87. We have, if 75% of our kids are passing the SOL, what about the other 25%? There should be a presentation to talk about what we are doing to make improvements in our system. And I have never heard that in the five years that my wife's been on the board. We need to talk about the things that need to be improved. There are things in this, we have a good system but it's not perfect. We compare ourselves to the state. The state is not world class. If we're gonna look at world class, look at some of the schools in this country. And my wife talks about the 90, 90, 90 schools, where these schools are not supposed to learn. The kids are all the kids that are never supposed to learn. And there are schools in this country that have disenfranchised kids, minority kids, Socially, social kids that shouldn't learn, that are learning at a high level. We need to model after that and do a good job. So let's talk about the education of our kids. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Jesse. Riley O'Casey. Good evening, Dr. Latif, board members, Dr. Waltz. My name is Riley O'Casey, and I'm the president of the Prince William Education Association. Welcome back to a new school year. Today is Wednesday. On Wednesdays, we wear red. Educators in West Virginia, Kentucky, Oklahoma, Arizona, Colorado, and North Carolina are demanding change. They want the respect they deserve with adequate pay and benefits. They want their students to succeed in safe schools. They are winning, which means their students are winning. According to the U.S. Department of Education, teachers make 5% less than they did in 2009. The average starting salary for a teacher is a little over 38,000, not in Prince William. We're doing okay. The average starting salary for recent college graduates is around 50,000. This has led to a nationwide teacher shortage. While 61% of the respondents who took the PDK international poll on education said they have trust and confidence in public school teachers, more than 50% said they would not want their child to become a teacher. This has also contributed to the nationwide teacher shortage. Virginia is next. Virginia will change. The Virginia Education Association, working with our elected officials, is working hard to increase the salaries of public school employees. This is a commitment that the VEA members across the state have taken to show solidarity. We are wearing red. But you don't have to be a VEA member or an educator to wear red. School board members, Dr. Waltz and your staff, I challenge you to also take the pledge to wear red every Wednesday to show your support for the students and employees in Prince William County Schools. I present to you, which I will give to Mrs. Urban, 25 copies of the Why I Wear Red, the Red for Ed pledge. Tell us why you support public education wear something red, take a photo, and send it to us. We would like to share your photos with our members. And I'm making a personal request for the next school board meeting. That's my birthday, and I will be here. So I hope that you all will wear red, because I will be, and that would be a great birthday gift. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Chrissy Falls. Good evening, Dr. Latif, school board members, Dr. Waltz, welcome back. I'm back. First, I would like to thank you, Ms. Lily, Jesse, for co-hosting our gang information night at Woodbridge High School last month. 
along with the district supervisor, Ruth Anderson, Y Incorporated, and the Prevention Alliance of Greater Prince William Coalition. Together, we did not only educate ourselves, but educated the community members that came. No matter where you stood on the subject, you left with more understanding than you did walking through those doors that night. This was not the first discussion we've had on this subject, and it won't be our last. I know my topics of addiction, internet safety, and exploitation, human trafficking, gangs, bullying, mental health, and suicide are not fun topics, but they are topics we need to be addressing, addressing especially these days. Why Incorporated and the Prevention Alliance of Greater Prince William Coalition, as well as many others, will be bringing these topics into your schools, community centers, local businesses, places, places of worship, and anyone else that'll have us. These discussions are a series, series called Our Community Matters, and I invite you and your district supervisor to co-host these with us. You are a huge influence to your constituents, your schools, and your communities. I will be contacting each and every one of you individually with your district supervisors as we make our calendar. We have begun this year with Mr. Deutsch to kick off Red Ribbon Week at Colgan High School. Don't worry, you'll hear more about Red Ribbon Week coming up. When we have these discussions, we have understanding. When we have understanding, we have empathy. When we have empathy, we have people working together. When we have people working together, we have our village. It takes a village. Can I ask you to do some homework? Because I will be here in two weeks. Understand what an ACE score is. ACE stands for Adverse Childhood Experiences. And see what those numbers can do and think of how we can lower the chances of those numbers, but how we can keep those numbers down. Thank you, and I look forward to working with each one of you. Thank you. Um, next, we're gonna move on to 17, Communications Technology Services, uh, Legislative Priorities. Mr. Kavitz. Only the best. <laughs> Good evening, Dr. Latif, members of the board, Dr. Waltz. Very pleased to present to you tonight the culmination of the work that's been done so far on our agenda for the upcoming legislative session. Now, many of these items uh, will be familiar to you as continuations of long-standing priorities and with some minor changes based on board feedback and the prioritization that was done by the superintendent staff, the language is almost identical to what you've seen previously. I'm gonna to endeavor to outline these fairly quickly and to provide a bit more emphasis on those items that are new or changed. The items that are not identical to things you've already seen have been identified with an asterisk. Now, just for your information, last year we had six full-fledged priorities. This year we are proposing eight in addition to our statements of opposition or support. So feel free to stop me if you have any questions on these. So moving forward to number one. Once again, we are going to be asking that the state fully fund all the requests that it makes of schools through the standards of quality, and that includes the costs of support personnel. We want to be sure that money is not funneled away from non to non-public education or through unfunded mandates. Also a continuation, we are going to ask that the legislators restore the full cost of competing allocation for school divisions that operate in the costly Region 4 area of Northern Virginia. The uh, cost of competing was greatly reduced during the Great Recession, and we're not fully back to having it all as yet, but the costs need to be associated with both teaching and support staff. Another continuing priority is the need for funding to both hire teachers and build the new classrooms that are necessary in order to lower class sizes. And in keeping with your input in the past, we are going to be asking that those reductions be sufficiently large to enable us to make a true difference in student achievement. Okay. Sorry, we're going a little ahead of ourselves here. Okay. 
So the next one is something that the state has made some real progress on, and that's the longstanding priority of allowing for alternatives to uh, standardized testing. The priority is seeks to continue that progress, but there is a new addition to this that was requested as a result from uh, Mrs. Jesse's comments. She asks that we ask the state to consider how important it is to have elementary students get some form of formal assessment of their writing skills. So with the recent elimination of the fifth grade SOL, this one seeks to extend the emphasis on alternative investment and assessment by having legislators and VDOE consider a different option for elementary writing. Another former statement of support is being elevated to a full-fledged priority because this issue is standing in the way of the enhanced hiring of security officers. As you know, legislators recently made it possible for school divisions to hire retired police to provide armed security in our schools. PWCS has engaged in a pilot project involving the hiring of six full-time retirees. The problem is that the Virginia retirement system allows its retirees to take no more than 80% of full-time employment. That's impeded our ability to hire, and so far the pilot for five officers and a supervisor has only succeeded in hiring three people. That's why we're gonna be asking the legislators to make it a priority to eliminate the 80% of full-time limit so we can get to the qualified former security officers, former police officers that we need in our schools. Another new item. Uh, this priority deals with eliminating the unintended consequences of what I think was a well-intentioned law. As you know, the schools used to be required to have parents opt out if they didn't want specific student information shared with third parties. That's opt out. The legislature recently passed a law requiring parents to explicitly opt in if a student address, phone number, or email address can be shared with groups like PTOs, with fellow team members, organizations that provide student services such as graduation gowns, or even in some cases with the police department. Creation of this situation is really an administrative nightmare for our schools because they have to gather thousands of permissions. And it could wind up meaning that students don't get the information that they need and that the principals and the superintendent consider to be very important. So we're gonna be asking the legislators to go back to the old system. In the meantime, since the new approach is in place, we are at least for now gonna be giving parents an email that will allow them tonight and again later this month to opt in electronically so that their students can get this valuable information. So now we're gonna move on to the proposed uh, Mr. statements. Cavitz, one yes, second. Sir. Can you go back? I think you may have skipped slide five. Did I? Or I, apologize. I, I may have. I think I did a double click. The, the state removed limitations on proffers. I don't think you. I think about that it. is a big one, and I yeah, apologize that's our, for missing that. That is a big one. I'd like you to make sure that you. Okay. Here we go. Yep. All right, well again, this is a new priority for this year, and it is aimed at getting the legislator to eliminate a problem that stemmed from legislation that passed a couple of years ago. That's when they passed limits on proffers that can be demanded from developers, and when they did that, they took away essential means for Prince William County Public Schools and other fast-growing divisions to acquire land or to build the new schools to demand or meet the demand that's created by new housing. So we're gonna ask our legislators to either eliminate this restriction or to exempt fast-growing divisions like ours. You added this as a statement of support last year. This year we are kind of elevating it as a full priority because of the impact that it is going to have if we are not able to get these kind of proffers going forward. Um, one, one more, um, on slide Four, or I'm sorry, slide, yeah, slide four. The state provide targeted new funding to build the necessary classroom space. Just to point out, um, I want to thank you, Mr. Cavett, superintendent, for meeting with Senator Stanley 
uh, with the state senators, the General Assembly, Senator Suravel and Senator Marsdan came up and toured um, one of our schools yesterday or two days ago. They are proposing a bill that would access um, new revenues coming to the state possibly um, to provide school systems with monies for renovations, remodeling. And so I want to thank you all for meeting with the senators and, um, and encourage you that as our legislative priority to work with them on that subcommittee to promote a bill that would allow us to access resources for possible renovations and needs. Yeah, that very much fits in with this priority. With it fits in with the priority, so thank you. I just wanted to point that out. All right, well, let me move on now to the statements of support and opposition. And I'm gonna to try to move through these a little bit more quickly. Uh, as always, these are divided by subject areas. And I will page through them. I won't cover all of them, but I will stop to highlight a few of them that may be new or of special interest. And I think the, uh, the first one here is going to fall into that category. Uh, this is an item that is very important to efforts to reduce truancy, divert cases from the courts, help students, and get them back into the school environment as quickly as possible. So hand in hand with the Prince William Juvenile Relations Court, we're asking legislators to allow a longer period for the court services unit to do assessments and to develop truancy plans, and also to let our school attendance officers file petitions for the enforcement of court orders that stem from compulsory attendance laws. Uh, the school board council expects to be very, very involved in this one because it can make a huge difference to our students. Moving forward again this year, we are going to support bills for increasing funding to part-time governor's schools and to oppose any cuts there. In the uh, finance, purchasing, and food services area, the only new statement on this front is a request to oppose any state effort that would force schools to pay for a full meal, beverage, or other food items for students who are not already covered by free and reduced price food options. It's important to note that the majority of students in need, the vast majority of students in need, are covered by those programs, and also that our schools don't permit students to go hungry and certainly are not involved in student shaming. But if the state is going to set a requirement for schools to pay for these costs, they must also come up with the full costs, not only of the food itself, but of all the preparation and support services necessary. Otherwise, it's going to have to come out of school educational funding. So that's a huge item there. I will do that. Good evening. Um, I just found out recently that if, as I'm a parent and I have children in the schools, and they're uh, and the bill, okay, I'm sorry, <laughs> starts to uh, rise yes, higher and right. higher. So at $50, it's turned over to a collection agency. My understanding is that does happen. Before that happens, the parents are notified repeatedly. Right. But if they couldn't, if they had not paid it up to that point, maybe they, there was something, another way to make this happen for them, to, or to help them get there. I, I'm kind of concerned that I did not know about this. I'm just learning about this particular thing, that you're actually sending people to the poorhouse. And I don't understand that. So That $50 means a lot to some people. You know, they're paying for the children's lunches. They are, they've run out of money, and maybe the bill has gotten to $50, then, well, it seems like what we do now, correct me, um, we go ahead and we don't, I don't know if we pay it, but I know that then they get a collection. So, uh, Ms. Ralston, let's, so I, I, uh, that, I agree with you. Um, why don't we do this at our next meeting or over the next two weeks? Let's get the information for how that policy works. Yes. And we either bring that up um, possibly on the agenda of the next meeting. I'd appreciate and, that. And, and we'll be happy to do that. And, um, um, and I thank you for bringing that very important issue. Thank you very um, much. Thanks, uh, Mr. Thank you. Cavett. We'll go ahead and continue with these uh, priorities. 
Oh, uh, Superintendent, Dr. Waltz, sorry. I, I was just gonna mention that um, we had a presentation, but we'll pull that back together and we can also facilitate a meeting with uh, our head of food services. Thank you we'll, so much. We'll sir. ask uh, Mr. Mallard to get that for you. Yes. Bringing that up, Diane. Okay, well, continuing with the statements of support and opposition, let me make sure where we are here. As always, uh, we support keeping student funds that are needed to develop and run great programs within the school division. So that's very important that that money not be taken away if a student who can take a course here electronically decides to take it somewhere else. Uh, and again this year, we're asking that the state remove the need for matching funds in order to qualify for preschool grants because that truly impeded our ability to continue growing our preschool programs. And as you know, the uh, First Lady was here today witnessing some of the uh, preschool programs, and I think they're very admirable what's going on, and we want to continue growing those. As you know, this year we successfully upgraded the division bandwidth uh, from 2 to 20 gigabytes, and we want to continue to grow that technology. So we support measures that would provide more funding for bandwidth and for infrastructure with some additional flexibility in the use of those funds. Under instruction and standards of learning, we continue to call on the state to better define comparable verified units of credit. And what that's going to do is help students who transfer to Prince William County Public Schools from areas outside the state to be aware of what they need for graduation. So that's a very important item. Again, one that we've had in previous years. Something I think that's near and dear to everyone's heart is the Virginia Star Program. That was created in Prince William County. It's continuing to spread across Virginia, donating thousands of refurbished computers to deserving families and schools, and at the same time, helping students to learn and earn valuable computing certifications. What we are asking for this year, and it's an important thing, is for measures that would establish a steady annual funding stream to help us continue to build that program across the state. Under school board governance, uh, proposals seek to maintain the authority of all of you, of local school boards, and as always, they oppose any imposition of new state mandates that don't come with the full funding to cover their costs. Under standards of quality, our statements call for support of any measures that will again prevent any kind of simplistic or demoralizing use of the A through F scale to rank our schools. A new item this year, and let me make sure we get back to that. A new item this year is calling for support to level the playing field when it comes to required course flexibility that's available to students in the International Baccalaureate program, as well as to all other students who seek advanced diplomas. The idea is to give all of them, and not just the ones in the IB program, the flexibility to take the most advanced course sequences that are available to them. Hmm, I am having trouble with the clicker. It's a bad day for it. Uh, something familiar to you from past years. Again, this year we are asking in our statements of support to continue to support the ratio of nurses, instructional technology coaches, and mental health professionals to the number of students we have as recommended by key professional groups. That is going to serve student needs. And finally, we are asking again this year to support items that would count computer coding as a world language for those seeking advanced studies diplomas. Uh, a more limited measure than that was passed along these lines last year, but we're really seeking this time to make that option available to all students. So where we go from here is first, of course, your approval of this in two weeks. Then we will be sharing it with the Board of County Supervisors. We are going to produce our annual legislative priorities document, sample bills, 
And then we have numerous opportunities to share those with our legislative delegation and to enlist your help in making these things a reality across the Commonwealth. Is there any further questions on that? Mr. Trenum. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you, Mr. Cavitz. I have, I guess, is, uh, issues or questions or concerns on two slides. First on slide eight, which is the opt-in versus opt-out uh, item. I, I get where we're wanting to make things a little bit easier, and it seems like uh, in some cases the opt-in may be, may have had some unintended consequences, but I'm leery about uh, going away from the opt-in opt because I think it was put in place for some good reasons. So um, I don't know that I'm necessarily comfortable with that. I think we've got some, there's ways that we can I appreciate the electronically uh, opting in. I think we can do more of that. I know in a couple of our high schools, we're actually electronically doing um, uh, uh, notes for um, uh, attendance. If uh, students miss, miss class or have to leave early, we're, we're doing that electronically now with the PIN system and stuff like that. So I think we can leverage some of that. So I don't know that I'm comfortable with that. Um, the other one on slide 14 is the... Um, Support and advocate for all bills that modify current language for the use of BPSA bonds so that computer refresh funding is not limited to capital expenses, but can also be used to purchase tablets and other mobile devices. I'm not, I don't think I want to put effort into basically borrowing money on, on borrowing long-term money on bonds that could be used, that are used for essentially short-term purchases. Tablets and mobile devices have a very short lifespan. I don't think that's a good use of bond money um, because you're refreshing, ideally you're refreshing every three years or less and your bonds typically you're paying out over 10 or 20 years. So I, I, I think that's, that's one I'm not necessarily comfortable with. So that's all I have right now, Mr. Chairman. I will note for you, Mr. Trenum, that was part of your approved priorities for last year. Mm -hmm. I like it no more. You want, you want I'm pointing out the fact. <laughs> it's good to have you back <laughs> Okay. Um, any other thoughts? Um, Ms. Satterwhite. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just wanted to comment and say thank you for continuing to include the um, SOQs for one nurse for every 550 students and the mental health professionals, mental health professionals, our counselors, our psychologists, and social workers, because we've always we've talked about that in the last couple of years, how important that is to us as a board. So I appreciate having that continue in our legislative priorities. Um, also, the funding um, for part-time for the governor's school, increasing the funding, I like that. The VPI, um, eliminate the match for preschool grants. We've been lobbying for that for years, and I really hope at some point that somebody listens to us in Richmond and we actually get that passed so we can have that extra money for a preschool program. Um, the proffers, our Board of County Supervisors have talked about making that a legislative priority. Are they still considering that to your knowledge? I believe that's their intent this year. Okay. And so working together with the BOCS, um, hopefully, and maybe even, I don't know if you've talked to any of our neighboring counties, I would think that Loudoun and Fairfax, maybe even Alexandria and Arlington might be interested in joining in that effort also because this, for our division, this made a strong impact to limit what we can do with our proffers under this new bill. Um, that just passed a couple years ago, and I really do hope we can make some changes to that. Um, also appreciate um, the classroom space, the security officers with change in legislation. I mean, that's such a clear conflict to what we have in place that just passed a couple years ago, security officers, and I'm seeing in the news articles around the state that schools are adopting this program around the state, so that should be an easy one. We should be able to work with VSBA even and, and legislating for that. Um, are working to legislate for that because it's just a clear conflict. Our schools are supportive of this program, and so I'm hoping we can make some inroads in that finally. I know that's been a legislative priority for years also, so hopefully that will make some changes. And um, we did submit that to the SBA this year, and I believe they have expect, uh, accepted that as something that they're awesome. going to Awesome. That's great news. Well. That's great news. That's extra lobbying for that. Um, Mr. Kavitz, thank you so much for pulling all this together, and thank you thank for you. everything that's included in here. Appreciate it. Ms. Jesse. Um, first of all, I want to thank you for all that you've done for the school division. Thank you. Um, you know, you've really been a voice for us. And I think uh, the, the, the writing piece, uh, you're a writer. 
and communication is important. When our kids graduate and they are entering the workforce, the area that we're weakest at is the communication skills. And I know that in by I was on the governor's SOL uh, committee, and it was not the, the educators that took that particular, the writing assessment away. Because we talk about performance-based assessments and how it is important for us to move away from fill in the blank kinds of things. And there's nothing like writing. And uh, when we talk about those 90-90-90 schools, the one thing they all have in common is that they write. And the kids write at an early age. In fact, uh, Amy White and I were having that discussion at dinner because at Vaughn, we did a lot of writing. The kids, you can tell, you know everything about a child when he writes. My daughter now tutors uh, SAT students, and they have to write these essays. Everybody knows in this room, if you've got a child, they have to write an essay. And when the assessment of writing happens at eighth grade, uh, then you know, we have no idea where they are with that whole writing process. So I'm hoping that uh, we can look at that in some way that um, helps. I think the one thing that we have to keep in mind is that my experience with writing for 20 or 30 years is that teachers are not taught how to teach writing. And so I think going along with that would need to be a corresponding professional development on how to teach writing and how to assess. Student self-assessment is also very important. On the pre-initiatives uh, for the uh, preschool, the governor's wife was here today and I was thoroughly impressed with her and how she in that classroom and she was so comfortable with kids and she really, I think, I really felt, Dr. Wallace, maybe I'm wrong, but I think she's going to be an advocate for us. Uh, she really started taking notes when we said, look, you know, if we want preschool, uh, we've got to have the matching funds. But again, I want to thank you for all you've done for Prince William County Schools. Thank you. Ms. Williams. Um, I just had a question in regards to the support and advocate uh, for bills that would facilitate the preparation of students for abundant and essential technology focused careers by allowing successful completion of computer coding courses to satisfy the standard unit of credit needed for in foreign world language for graduation with advanced studies diploma. Um, I remember something coming out from the state in regards to that. In, uh, was it is it in 2019 that students are able to take coding courses to fulfill their no, foreign language? My understanding language, is that is what it... happened in the past year is that they approved that students who were speakers of a language other than English would then Those be only... able to apply courses in coding okay. to their world languages requirement, but that leaves a lot of other students out, okay. and so we're looking for a broader initiative there. Well, I really appreciate that because I know many students don't have the wiring for foreign languages, but uh, do have the wiring for computer coding, which to me is a foreign language, might as well be. Um, it's definitely a scientific language, so I appreciate that this is in there, that we're continuing to fill that void for, or trying to fill that void for our students who don't take foreign languages. So thank you for that. Thank you, Mr. Kavitz. Listen, I want to, uh, this is your last meeting. It is. is this correct? I can't um, thank you enough for what you've done for Prince William County Schools. Your expertise, your consent, your advice, your counsel on communications has been invaluable. Um, you've, uh, from a personal level, um, helping orient me to this job and, and being there has been terrific and you supporting the board and everything we do in the school system, I can't thank you enough. I, I wish you the best on your retirement and um, Thank you once again. Thank you. I think for the other board members, if during board matters, we can uh, thank Mr. Kavitz as well. well. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Moving on to um, superintendent's time. Dr. Waltz. Thank you very much. Good evening. Uh, my presentation will be in two parts. Um, this is the night. Two parts. Oh, yes, this is uh, this is also 
This is also the night that we have the uh, annual back to school report. So um, I know everybody's looking forward to that. So I'm pleased to welcome everyone to an exciting new school year. As I traveled around the division since opening day, I've already seen students and staff engaged in teaching, learning, and enjoying the start of school with good reason. And so, as I mentioned, we're going to have the back to school report framed as the top 10 reasons for everyone to be excited about the school year. So if we can pull that up. Continuing, excellent. Clean and well-maintained facilities support staff cleaned and readied 11.2 million square feet of building space for the new school year. Number nine, on schedule and within budget. So we have opened the new Independence non-traditional school and that school as state-of-the-art facility combines the former New Directions and New Dominion Alternative Education Centers as well as Pace East and provides all students with greater access to courses and division resources. So we're very excited. We had a great ribbon cutting recently and that was very, very well attended. Uh, we also have a new school coming uh, on the Prince William County Parkway. So there'll be a naming process at some point and that school will open uh, next year for the 19, 20, uh, 19 and 20 school year. Number eight, school additions and renovations. We have completed major additions at Lake Ridge Middle School and Patty Elementary School. And by moving all of the younger students from across uh, 234 Dumfries Road over to Patty from Washington Reed, we were now able to open up our first pre-K center in the Washington Reed uh, building. And that is one of 16 schools I've already visited this year. So they're very excited over there with all our uh, preschool kids. Number seven, technology support. As you can see, there's been a lot of action with technology. The, our staff has been very busy with maintenance and upgrades, adding and supporting several new devices to enhance the learning of our students and our staff. Number six, student learning. 12,500 students attended summer school for remediation or enrichment or extended school year and also high school academics. Nearly 100 students attended the summer art enrichment and 131 students attended the summer orchestra camp. Number five, our prepared staff. Nearly 5,900 participants took 490 summer professional development courses in order to prepare for our students in the new year. Number four, best and brightest. We now have over 11,500 employees, including 782 brand new teachers to Prince William. And we had almost 65,000 job applications over the past school year. Number three, support services. You can see that we served more than 9,200 breakfasts starting on opening day and 51,000 lunches. 814 buses traveled 56,000 miles and about 61,000 students ride the bus to and from schools. And in case you didn't know this, we have a bus driver shortage, which is a nationwide shortage. So we have classes that start every two weeks and you can go to our website. We'd love to have you consider driving a school bus. Number two, celebrating success. This is gonna be just a little bit more extensive. At number two, we have many successes to celebrate. PWCS is one of only five first place winners among large school divisions in the National School Boards Association Magna Awards competition. That's a nationwide competition. And our advanced programs for all initiative was recognized for our efforts to ensure all students are encouraged to succeed in advanced courses. Continuing. Speaking of advanced courses, during the 17-18 school year, more than one-third of our students took at least one advanced or weighted course. We will receive our most up-to-date on-time graduation rate at the end of the month, but last year's rate is something to brag about, and note the significant growth since 2008. So if you will look at that. Uh, and also, I want to talk now about the scholarships. Our graduates earned millions of dollars in scholarships last year to pursue their dreams. 
In three years, our students have increased the scholarship dollars that they have earned by 133%. So last year we had 74 million in scholarships. And we consider that a positive Prince William County School. So continuing, 22 schools earned 2018 Virginia Index of Performance Award for Academics. Nine schools earned the Virginia Music Educators Association Blue Ribbon Award for Outstanding Band, Orchestra, and Choral Programs. All eligible PWCS high schools continue to be ranked among the top 9% of high schools in the Washington Post, America's Most Challenging High School List 2017. And of course, number one, our students. We welcome nearly 91,000 students to the new year, up about 1,000 students from last year, and they're bright, enthusiastic, and filled with endless possibilities, as you can see from that young man right there. <laughs> and together, we deliver for the students. It all takes a team to make this happen. And we want to thank our school board, our teachers, support staff, administrators, civic groups, our business partners, elected officials, church groups, families unite to deliver a world-class education for our students. So welcome back to school. And continuing. That's the top 10 reasons. And that's why I want to take a few moments to address a few other important uh, matters. One is uh, some things that were brought forth that we're considering for employees that we thought you might be interested in. And we're working on some regulation changes for several of these items. The first one is employee leave. We plan to allow for the first time staff to roll over two personal days to the next school year. That will allow a total of five accumulated personal days instead of the current three before being converted to sick leave. Also as covered in a new forthcoming regulation, employees who must report at their regular time when a delayed opening or early release is called for inclement weather will be allowed to use any available leave including annual, personal, or leave without pay without the required notice to offset their absence or lateness. Classified employees who are not eligible for annual leave may use their sick leave. This is the only exception to the sick leave regulation that, and would not be available for those employees who are considered essential personnel on those days. Also not required by Virginia code, we will be reminding principals that teachers are to receive a duty-free lunch period except in emergency situations. Okay, so. Uh, one more item on this uh, particular list, and that's about the possibility of looking at interim grades online. Two of our high schools volunteered, Potomac and Patriot, and they're piloting the delivery of interim grades online following an electronic notification. These notifications will include also auto-dialer messages on the phone, so anyone who can't access the interim online will be able to request a hard copy. So it wouldn't be right to start the school year without announcing some of our most recent accomplishments. Battlefield High School's Philharmonic Orchestra will perform at Carnegie Hall on April 1st, 2019. This is a huge honor and great tribute to the outstanding talent of our students and orchestra director, Zachary Saunders. Lisa Jacobs Meyer, an ESOL teacher at Henderson Elementary School, has been named a 2019 Global Learning Fellow by the National Education Association Foundation. Lori Ann Pollock of Penn Elementary School is one of four Virginia finalists for the 2018 Presidential Award for Excellence in Mathematics and Science Teaching. The award is regarded as the nation's top honor for mathematics and science teachers. The final awardees for each state will be announced next year. Supervisor of Threat Assessment, Dolores Robinson, has been invited to serve on a student safety work group. It was created as part of Governor Northam's reestablished children's cabinet. The group will be responsible for making recommendations to the governor that will support the safety of our students. 
I'm pleased to announce that Kilby Elementary has been awarded another three-year 21st century grant by the Virginia Department of Education for after-school academic enrichment programs, and the grant was awarded for $200,000. These are just the start of many great things, including countless student accomplishments that will be happening this year. I think we can agree they are positively PWCS. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Waltz. Next, I'd like to move to um, board matters. Um, we have a number of policies, uh, revisions on how the board is run. I want to thank each board member. Um, although we didn't have meetings this summer, each board member helped review these policies, spent time reading through them, offering changes. Uh, I appreciate the time, especially Mr. Trenum, Ms. Williams, Ms. Jesse, all you guys for um, uh, really spending some time this summer coming in and doing some extra work on a lot of these things. Um, a lot of that's not noticed by what happens here in the public. Uh, Mary, can I turn the meeting over to you on these matters? I'll be happy to take the board through these just very briefly. Let me say, as a preliminary matter, this is kind of unusual in that the board attorney does not usually um, draft policies or revise policies. But this is a situation that because we had a whole series, about 30 policies, in the section of the policy manual under school board governance and operations, the board asked me to work this summer with the board parliamentarian to bring these fairly old policies up to date and reflect current practices. So that is what we did. Um, if you look at these policies on the, uh, on, on the website here, you can see that the changes are made in red line. And where I had suggested changes from a board member, in this case mostly from Mr. Tranum, um, those changes are reflected in yellow. So you can see the additions from the board members. So policy 101 was the first one, and that was authority and title. Um, that has been renamed authority and purpose of the school board. Uh, in, in this policy, we corrected and eliminated old language from 1992 that didn't really accurately reflect the, the purpose and legal authority of, of a school board as, as, it is, as it's reflected in the current law and our current practices. The next policy was 102. This was formerly policy 140 and regulation 141. They were rolled over and combined into new policy 102, which is formulation and adoption of policies and regulations. This is the, the process that the board follows to formulate and adopt policies and regulations like we're doing tonight. Essentially, it's the first reading, second reading process um, that the board has followed for many years. Um, the uh, implementation language, which was formerly in the regulation, was rolled into the new policy, so that everything that existed in the old policy and regulation is pretty much in the new one, just updated. Mr. Trenum added a section requiring that regulations, which are implemented by the superintendent after review by his staff, that regulations be provided to the board and published on the PWCS website at least 30 days before they take effect. Um, that's an addition that I haven't had any input yet from staff on, but staff might want to weigh in on that at some point. Policy 111, and, I, and let me t say as an aside here, since there were about 30 of these, we're bringing them forward about five at a time each board meeting. So the third one in this group is policy 111, election number, qualification, and terms of office for school board members. This was renamed to delete the previous reference to vacancies on the school board. And that was done because at the same time that we updated this policy, we updated policy, former policy 125, vacancies on the school board. And that change was also precipitated by legislative changes to vacancies occurring on the school board when a member, as Mr. Trenum did, uh, departs for military service. So we we have revised those in conjunction, and, and, the, and all of the, de the uh, terms dealing with vacancies on the board are now, are now in old policy 125, which will be coming to the board at the next meeting as new policy 116. Are you following me on all this? <laughs> so here in this one, policy 111, um, we, um, we also added some additional language dealing with the statutory qualifications for a citizen to become a board member. 
basically for public information. Mr. Trenum suggested uh, further clarification regarding the eligibility of Prince William County School Board employees to serve on a school board. And basically that is they are ineligible to serve on the school board, not ineligible to run, but if they are elected, they must resign before they can take their seat. The next policy is 112, orientation and professional development of school board members. This is another old policy, 104.1, which we suggest be deleted and re renumbered as 112. One of the things we try to do is to straighten out the numbering system here and get things clumped together in the appropriate order. Um, we updated the references here to the statutory requirements for professional development. School board members are required by the standards of quality to receive professional development training. Um, and we, uh, we, we made this correlate more with the legislative language. We also enhanced, uh, put language in there recognizing that there are currently enhanced options for professional development available to board members through the National School Board Association and private organizations or counseling services that the board has taken advantage of over the past few years. Finally, we have policy 113, and that's the authority of Prince William County School Board members. This was clarified with just minor edit, edits intending to clarify the, the Dillon's Rule principle that no individual school board member has authority on their own. They only have authority as either delegated to them by statute or as granted to them by the school board as a whole. This is a principle that was reinforced this past year in two decisions from the Prince William Circuit Court. So those are the changes, essentially, in a, in a nutshell, to the first five of the policies. If the other board members, beyond Mr. Trenum, have additional changes, I'm happy to look at them before we bring them back for a second reading. Thank you, Mary. Mr. Trenum. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you, Ms. McGowan. I just want to couple, couple, comment on a couple of these, having trouble talking today. <coughs> As first, uh, several of them are just... Um, uh, so my suggestions were just wordsmithing types of things or clarification. On policy 111, the reason why I added the, the language about what PWCS employees is because basically the way it was written before, it sounded like a lawyer wrote it, which it was, but it, you really couldn't read it. So <laughs> that was just to kind of make it clear for those of us who aren't lawyers. Um, Policy 102, I want to comment on two things. Number one, uh, the reason why I suggested the, the modification for the uh, regulations be provided uh, for an amount of time, I, I, I picked 30 days, it was as good a number as any, uh, was to just give everybody a chance to um, see it and get used to it before we actually implement it, um, or at least have an opportunity to see it. Uh, it kind of helps to see if there's any unanticipated consequences or just uh, to give folks a heads up. The other thing about policy 102, uh, I just want to actually just want to mention this to the other, to my fellow board members is um, there's a, in, I guess in the second paragraph, uh, it says that in the event that no concerns are raised at the first meeting uh, or reading of a proposed policy or proposed revision, uh, it may be placed on consent agenda uh, for the second reading. And the idea by, behind that is so we don't clog the schedule, which I appreciate that. I just want to say that there, there may be many, a lot of our uh, staff or other uh, uh, parent communities members may, may not read them until they actually see them discussed on the on the um, uh, at the board meeting. So we could get questions or concerns about them all the way up until that second second reading, second time. So I think we just need to be uh, sensitive to that and remind ourselves that if they are on consent and there are some concerns, that we can pull them and discuss them. So, um, like I said, that's just a sensitivity piece uh, from that perspective. But that's all I have on, on these, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Trenum. Dr. Waltz. The staff has not reviewed yet the 30-day request. We, we've certainly looked at everything else. Um, my only concern about that is there are sometimes, well, there are a couple of things that come to mind right away. One is when there are legal changes and we need to change our practice basically immediately. And the second would be sometimes when there's, I mean, we've made some really positive changes um, with students and sometimes with employees. And again, that could either slow down the process or delay it almost for an entire year. 
for example, the leave regulation, we would put into play immediately because there's programming and there's other things that, that would need to be done for that. So I think at a minimum, we would need to look at what would be the consequences of waiting 30 days to implement. It's not so much the, the point of making sure everybody has it, but we would just need to consider at least those couple things come to mind. Uh, Ms. Jesse. Uh, maybe Mary or uh, Mr. Trenum, I know you mentioned a change from uh, first read to a consentogen. Could you clarify that a little bit for me? When I read through that, I was a little bit your rationale for that and how that would work and how it's different. Uh, well, actually, Ms. Jesse, yeah. I, I didn't write that one, so I was okay. just commenting on it. Oh, yeah, um, okay. I think Mary, Mary's probably better off to explain. Yeah. That, that was added at the suggestion of staff after we noticed during the course of last year that there were a number of uh, policy revisions that would come to you that, were, that, that really nobody had any issues with. And so it just seemed more expeditious if nobody had any issues on the first reading um, to put it on the consent agenda for the second reading because they were just routine approvals. And it just seemed it would be an yet another measure that would expedite meetings, which is something that the board is interested in doing. And, and to but remind everyone to make, make it crystal clear that, you know, if there's something on the consent agenda and your materials prior to the meeting, you know, you're free to email us or call and say, I'd like this pulled off consent and move to board matters. So even if we were to follow that policy and, and put it on consent, it can always, every board member has the right to pull it off. And, and move it forward. Consent agenda means we're not gonna have a whole lot of discussion on that stuff and we're gonna whip right through that because we've all looked at it, read up on it, we're cool with it, we're moving forward. Anything that we're not happy with or need to discuss, you have the two weeks before a meeting to go over with the staff on those questions and if that doesn't work out, then we pull it off and move it to board matters for discussion. But the reason we have the consent agenda is to move through those items very quickly and so, but as board members, you all will retain the right to pull something off consent agenda. Well, that was, that was my concern because sometimes when uh, policies, because there's so much writing and so much read through and, and you're reading through trying to see how this whole thing works, you don't have a lot of questions when on that first read, but then you go home and you look at it again and you come back and think, oh yeah, I'll have a second. Sometimes I'll read them and think, well, I do have a question, but I think I'll read it, get clarification, and when the second read comes around, I can ask more questions. So as, as long as, and I was also reminded that uh, on consent, we can move it off. Yeah. But that was, that was my thing. And to save time, it's, uh, you know, I, I don't know if these policies have taken a lot of time. There are other things that we need to change, but the policies have been moving fairly quickly. But thank you. I want to thank you for all the work because I, I, you sent me another package and I said, oh no. Uh, <laughs> I, I think you sent, there was one where there was a number two or something, I couldn't find number two. But uh, I just want to thank you for all the work that you've done on this this summer. It's a great deal of work. And also, thank you for working with our parliamentarian. I'm sure he had a lot of input into it. Thank you. He did, he was very helpful. Yeah, I know, I know. Uh, Ms. Satterwhite. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Ms. McGowan, I've got a question on 112, policy 112. Um, it's the second paragraph toward the end. It says, such orientation and training shall be engaged in by each board member prior to or at the beginning of Prince William County School Board membership. Um, I know when I came on the board, there was a question of who pays for things if, if someone isn't sworn in. So that was my question. It, it, when you're talking about prior to membership on the board, if someone's already been elected and prior to membership, does, does a member have to be sworn in before they can participate in, say, VSBA? Um, so that's something I just wanted to ask about. You don't have to answer me right now on that, but it's a question that I had. And then also, um, I remember asking this at one of our VSBA trainings. And they said that any trainings outside of VSBA, VSBA and NSBA don't count toward their yearly number of credits they give us for continuing education each year. Um, and my, other, my question with that is, okay, are we required to have a set number of hours for training by the state? No. Okay. No, and the, and the VSBA had 
for many years, kind of a monopoly on the training. Yes. But now there are many other alternatives to the training. Certainly the National School Board Association training is, is excellent training that the board takes advantage of every year. But there's no requirement. Standard five of the standards of quality simply says you shall have a high quality professional development training. Okay. So it might not add up to the little pins they give us, but we can still have training outside right. of the SBA and That's SBA right. and it counts. Okay. Probably get a pin from the NSBA too. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. Okay, I think we'll, um, bearing any further questions, we're going to move on to, um, where am I at here? Um, revision of policy 403.09, student safety equipment and training. First reading, Ms. Goss. Good evening, Interim Chairman Latif, school board members, and Dr. Waltz. Tonight we are proposing a change in policy 403.09, student safety equipment and training. Uh, the language uh, change allows us to more broadly cover student safety within the classroom. Uh, you may also have noted um, some recent changes that were made to regulation 403.09-1, physical education safety. Uh, really the changes there were just to utilize the word shall in place of will. Ms. Hatterwhite. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Goss, I just want to clarify, and I, you might have just said this, I just want to clarify. So this policy 403, student safety equipment training, this is designed for all subjects, is that correct? So it does now cover all subjects. There are some other regulations that actually um, were not recently updated along with this physical, physical education one, and they cover other topics like they prohibit the movement of dangerous equipment by students. Um, we have a regulation around climbing walls and ropes and the safety of that. Also hazardous waste um, material disposal. So there are some other regulations that pair up with this. So we're just trying to okay. broaden this. Uh, I think the other piece kind of in response to your, your question is also that we um, provide information to students and staff for other areas of the curriculum. For example, we have a science education safety plan and that provides some more uh, lengthy guidelines um, to our, our teachers. So there are other ways we also get that information to them, but this policy allows us to kind of um, put a number of things under that topic. Thank you. I just want to have that clarification. So if Absolutely. somebody just saw this tonight, that they understand that we have a lot more in place than, than a just physical education. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you, Ms. Goss. Um, we'll move on to 1907, revision of policy 503.01, conflict of interest, first reading, Ms. White. Good evening, Chairman Latif, school board members, Dr. Waltz, and the members of our community. Prince William County Public Schools has always held its employees to the highest standards. To be sure that our policies and regulations are in line with these expectations, policy 503.01 was rewritten to reflect the essence of the Virginia Conflict of Interest Act and regulation 503.04-1 was written in collaboration with division council to explain the purpose and meaning of the provisions of the state and local government conflict of interest act as it applies to the school board and its employees. We are all responsible to be in compliance with the word and intent of the law. To provide guidance concerning issues commonly faced at the school level, such as tutoring, coaching, clubs, use of PWCS property and resources, outside employment, and fair supervisory practices, we felt a need for a con conflict of interest regulation aligned with this law. This regulation prohibits inappropriate conflicts and requires disclosure of certain economic interest. It's based on advice of legal counsel, a search of surrounding counties, regulations, and policies, feedback from school level employees, and central office administrators. Along with the draft policy and the new regulation, we have also included frequently asked questions to assist our employees in understanding how the Conflict of Interest Act impacts our practices, but in a more accessible way and provides direction for next steps when there is any question about real or perceived conflicts. 
We will provide links to the law itself and the frequently asked questions so all our employees have immediate access to them. As the FAQs are a living document, they will continue to be added to and updated. Thank you. Mr. Wilk. Okay. Hi, Ms. White. Hi. Hi. How are you? <laughs> um, I have a couple questions and uh, looking at some scenarios just for some clarif clarification on some of these policies. Um, and I apologize, I'm now kind of diving a little deeper into these, but maybe some of my scenarios are a little different. So I'm trying to see if there's any variance between role uh, and what your position is in the school system with these conflicts of interest. So I think this, uh, I'll do, you know, this is a full disclosure. So my wife is a teacher in the county. She's the drama director. She's the sponsor of the group. She gets a stipend for that. Uh, I know a lot of other teachers in the county as well who do different programs and sponsorships and such coach as well. Um, so I already saw in a scenario, could a teacher have a current student pay for a tutoring in that same subject? The correct answer is no. The correct, correct answer is no. You cannot tutor your own students because the learning of your students is your responsibility as a teacher. So as if, if I'm in the building, so as not the current teacher, but let's just say I am an administrator or a coach um, or a sponsor, can I tutor a student? and get paid for them outside of school? Uh, the, the administrator could not get paid outside of school because of their uh, employment with Prince William County Schools. If you were a sponsor or a coach, I'd need more information, I'd need greater context, and that's why we've put in the regulation um, different attachments, disclosure forms, so if there's any question at all about tutoring or coaching or use of our facilities, you talk to your supervisor, you fill out the disclosure form, and there'll be a committee uh, composed of people from finance, um, from professional learning, HR, and legal counsel that will help you make the best decision for our students and employees. Okay, so in a hypothetical scenario, uh, and this is not realistic, but hypothetical, if my wife was to open up a theater company and remain the theater sponsor at her high school, would it be a conflict of interest if she took money from a current student to participate in her private theater company? At this point, if it was someone she was teaching, I would tell her to fill out the disclosure form. But if the kid was just in her program, not just a student. Just in her student. program. I think there's an FAQ about um, being part of an academy teaching gymnastics. It has to, there's a connection between tutoring students who may be in your school, um, and how much money you'd make as part of a private company, but it's so um, dependent on the particular situation that I would really recommend that she get contact me or contact her supervisor, and we'll find out to protect herself and the school division. Would it vary if she was the lacrosse coach and she ran a lacrosse camp? That's an interesting scenario. Um, I think if you are a coach, and you also happen to own a business in that particular field, you have to be particularly careful. Um, there's so much involved when you're a coach, selection, um, recruitment, all of those things that can kind of be hot topics for us. So is there a way to own your private business in a sport and coach? Absolutely. But that would definitely necessitate a disclosure form, some ways that we could make sure we were mitigating the perception of a conflict of interest or a real conflict of interest. So I wouldn't want to give you a generic answer mm -hmm. until so, I knew all and, the specifics. No, that, and that's helpful because, you know, my next thing would be, it, could there be a perception if this theater company she ran, you know, whatever, K-12 students were cast in, you know, part of her company over the years, and that parents may feel that their kids have to be in her program for the years in order for her to possibly them, the he or she, their student, to possibly get a role in her play in the school uh, over the years. Could there be a perceived conflict of interest? Absolutely. That's why we have to mitigate it. Are there states that completely, or uh, states, or let's go with states, or are you aware of any states that have laws that completely eliminate owning a private business and also being a, a coach or a sponsor in a school? I believe they are, and there are some states that won't let you tutor anyone in your class, in your school, or someone coming to your school. Virginia doesn't happen to be quite as strict on some of those questions. 
are you, I, I know you mentioned you talked to surrounding jurisdictions. Are, you, are you, we aware of any in our vicinity that have policies in place that would follow those kind of more hardline I approach, I guess? I get that information to you. Okay. Okay. I think those are my questions. Thank you. I think this is a very serious issue. Um, Mary. I just wanted to, to point out that this code of ethics goes beyond the conflict of interest statute. This imposes, just like the board has a code of ethics that is a step above what's required by the law, that, that this code of ethics also reaches situations like you mentioned, Mr. Wilk, which give the appearance of impropriety but may not be a violation of law. So that's what we built, we built this around that concept. Did we, and I'm sorry, Dr. No, uh, have, we, did we, have we had anyone review who might be an expert in this field, uh, people who deal with conflicts of interest or this is their specialty or their area, their arena. I mean, we just you know had a big thing down in Richmond with a previous governor and this whole thing. I would imagine that there's people in the field who look at conflicts of interest of public employees and such. Has there been any other eyes on this, I guess? Well, we've followed the law. So it, definitely we have prohibited all conflicts of interest that are prohibited by law and there's plenty of information and material out there that we availed ourselves of from the legal experts. But um, no, we did not consult anybody that might deal with this more nebulous area of um, the appearance of impropriety, uh, what, what appears to be a conflict of interest even though it's not prohibited by law. Okay, thank you so much. I appreciate both of you, thank you. Ms. Jesse. Um. I I, um, I just, you know, there's so much reading and there's just so many terms and, uh, and when you start getting into legal documents, it becomes, uh, sometimes it's overwhelming. I, I don't know who wrote the, um, the FAQs, this, this page, the six pages, but I, I just think that whoever wrote this did an excellent job of writing it in a manner that is understandable. Oh, <laughs> would it be you? Um, I, we looked at what we hear most yeah. commonly, Mrs. Jesse, and uh. both of our attorneys reviewed it at length. We got input from activities directors, yeah. principals, coaches, uh, human resources, and finance. So I can't take all the credit at all. We worked on it for quite a long time at Dr. Waltz's request, mm -hmm. and it's a living document. So as we yeah. get more situations, such as what Mr. Uh, Wilk uh, brought forward, we'll add to this. Yeah. Well, I think it's thorough, and uh, I guess I'm not surprised that you had something to do with it because I can see the teacher element here because sometimes we write things, and even uh, when I look at I go in and look at the information for parents on testing, and we, uh, if, I, if I were not a person who had the background, I would have no idea what I've read, and I think we really need to think about our audience. So you are a writer, and obviously you thought about your audience, and I just want to congratulate you on this because it's an exceptional document. Thank you. Thank you. I had a lot of help. So this was the first reading. Um, I would urge all of you who have issues with this to work diligently over the next couple of weeks on this issue. Communicate with Mary, Division Council, on um, any concerns you have, ideas, thoughts, ways to move forward on this. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to move next to um, Safe Schools Advisory Council appointment for, I guess, me, interim chair. Um, that is 19.08. Um, there's nothing on here. Where, are, we, are we voting on this? What, what is it? Where, where I, how come I don't have that? I don't know. I, have, I, I can make the motion. Okay, can I have a motion to it? Well, can I read it? Where is it? How come I don't have it on my thing? I don't know. It's weird. Okay, so, so let me have, uh, okay, can I have a, a, can I have a motion? Ms. Right. Jesse. I move that the Prince William County School Board approve the appointment of Robin Morrow to the representative of the interim chairman at large on the school, Safe Schools Advisory oh. Council for a term effective August 1, 2018 through June 30th, 2020. I second. Second. Um, discussion? 
Um, I'll just point out Robin Mara is a former employee of the school system. She's a, a fantastic, I believe, addition to the, the Safe Schools Committee. I'm excited to support her. She's um, a mom. She works with groups that um, promote safety in schools and safety across our county, and I'm very excited to um, appoint her. So thank you. Um, can we have a further discussion or vote? Vote. Thank you. While we're waiting on that, um, I will move to 19.09, Safe Schools Advisory Council reappointments for Brentsville, Coles, and the Absco, Potomac Districts. The vote is eight, yes, unanimous, motion Excellent, passed. so we'll move to the next 19.09. Um, do I have a motion here? Mr. Chairman, I move that the Prince William County School Board approves the reappointment of Ann Nuzzo as the representative for the Brentsville District. Clay Kondasami as a representative for the Coles District. Victoria Cole Rowland as a representative for the Neabsco District and Kathy Strittmotter as representative for the Potomac District on the State School Advisory Council for a term effective July 1, 2018 through June 30, 2020. Do I have a second? Mr. Chairman, second. Second by Ms. Ralston. Uh, discussion? Vote, please. We're going to move on to 1910, Special Education Advisory Council appointments for the Neabsco and Woodbridge districts. Mr. Can I have a motion? Mr. Chairman? Yes, Ms. I Williams. I the Prince William County School Board approve the appointments of Angela Kominsky as a representative for the Neabsco district and Shelley White as a representative for the Woodbridge district on the Special Education Advisory Council for a term effective July 1, 2018 through June 30, 2020. Do I have a second? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Second I by Ms. Ralston. Thank you. Um, Please vote. I'm going to go to 1911, um, Special Education Advisory Council reappointments of Brentsville, Gainesville, and Aquan districts. Trenum, Satterwhite, Jesse, can I have a motion? Mr. Chairman. Mr. Trenum. I move that the Prince William County School Board approve the reappointment of Sarah Matthews as a representative for the Brentsville District, the reappointment of Cynthia Buckley as a representative for the Gainesville District, and the reappointment of Jason Carone as a representative for the Occoquan District on the Special Education Advisory Council for a term effective J July 1st, 2018 through June 30th, 2020. Outstanding. Thank you. Do I have a second? Mr. Chairman, I'll second that motion. Ms. Satterwhite seconds the motion. Discussion? Vote, please. We're going to move to board matters. Uh, let's start with Ms. Satterwhite to my left. Is that okay? Thank you, Ms. Satterwhite. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Welcome back, everybody. It's already been a very busy back to school year. Um, I've attended several back to school nights. It's been great to see friends and students, um, enjoying seeing everybody back. And uh, along with back to school, there have been a few issues with transportation, and a few is a little bit of an understatement. Um, Mr. Mallard, I want to thank you for working with all of us to try and resolve the problems that our parents are having with transportation. I know you've worked very hard on this, and I want to thank you for all the work you're doing. I want to thank you for the forward thinking that you're doing for the future also, that we don't want to have these problems just this year. We want to make sure we don't have them next year either. So thank you for that. Um, to all of our parents who have written to us, who have called us, I want to thank you for um, contacting us. We are working very hard. We're only in the second week of school, but we're working very hard to resolve those problems. I know as I receive the emails and the phone calls, I'm referring them to the superintendent's office and Mr. Mallard, and I know that they are resolving them. And um, thank you for your patience as we work through this this year. Um, we've, you know, as Dr. Waltz said, too, we have a shortage of bus drivers, and um, we are definitely recruiting. So, um, you know, I'd like to say, too, you know, we have our former bus drivers who've left, and, um, you know, we, we would love to see you come back. So we, we definitely don't want to continue to see these significant transportation concerns, and um, I want to thank all the parents for your patience. I want to thank your students for their patience. And one parent left a message for me this morning, and she said, this is a very stressful way for her children to start the school day. 
And um, she said, there's some very stressed out little kids at the elementary level. She said, I decided it was better for me to be late for work in the morning than for my kids to be late to school. And those are the choices our parents are making right now. So um, you know, thank you everyone for your patience. I know we're working on it. We'll continue to work on it until we can get it right. And so thank you for that. I'm very excited about the school year, looking forward to all the back to school nights that are still to come. And for those of you who don't realize it, we have back to school nights that continue until mid-October. And so all of us will be working to get to those as best we can um, with multiple back to school nights planned on the same nights. And looking forward to seeing everybody at all our different events. Um, tomorrow night, we also have our first board meeting for the Governor's School at Innovation Park. Looking forward to attending that. And um, again, welcome back to everybody and all of our students. And um, Mr. Kavitz, I want to thank you so much for all the work you've done with the school board. I want to thank you for the work you've done with me. There were a couple of times we worked on projects in the Gainesville district, and you were very, very helpful. The communications piece that we did about the overpass when the Haymarket um, 66 exchange was under construction, thank you for the messaging with that and working with me on that and getting it out to everybody to try and keep our students safe. And uh, you will be missed. Um, I know you've, you've been here for many years now, um, and thank you so much for all your hard work with us. Congratulations on your retirement. Mr. Trenum. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Mr. Uh, Chairman. <clears throat> um, first off, welcome back, everyone. It's good to have uh, be back in school. Um, the, some of the summer was nice, but it's uh, time to get back to work. So uh, welcome back. Let's see, as Ms. Satterwhite said, it is back, uh, back to school events are full, full swing. Uh, right now we're doing high schools. I think we did Patriot and Stonewall in the Brinsville District last week. Tomorrow night is Brinsville District High School. I know that. Um, see, Mr. Cavitz, I want to thank you uh, for your uh, hard work and congratulations on your retirement. Um, you looked happier up here than I've seen you in a long time. <laughs> uh, Dr. Walsh, I do want to thank you for the uh, for the for the. Um, Changes in the, the leave, uh, leave regulations and leave policies to make things more flexible. I think that those are good things, and uh, I look forward to seeing how the electronic uh, interims work out and see if we can reduce some of the administrative overhead uh, for our, our staff on that. Um, and then finally, uh, last but not least, uh, Mr. Farage, Ms. Bergeron, and Mr. Uh, Latoro, uh, congratulations and welcome to the school board. Um, I always tell people, be careful what you ask for because you just <laughs> might get it. So, but uh, welcome aboard. Thank you. Ms. Diane Ralston, the Absco District. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Mr. Cavitz, I'm going to start off with saying I'm going to miss you because you know I kind of don't understand what I'm doing here. So I, I will miss you terribly. I hope you come back. I hope you visit with us. I hope your family finally gets tired of you being at home. So great blessings to you. Okay. Well, the school year started off really good on a bang for me because at Hampton uh, uh, Middle School in my district was a wonderful backpack, a wonderful one. It was um, sponsored by, for Hampton specifically, uh, it was sponsored by Mur Muriel Gar and uh, SunTrust Bank, 100, um, let me see, it's the 100 Black Men and the Omega Sci-Fi Fraternity. So we uh, ended up giving away 100, 100, between 180 and 200 backpacks, totally loaded with everything that the student might need. So we're very grateful for that. And just to throw this in, I'm so glad to see that Hampton is now accredited. Is that correct? Someone told me that. There will be a state release of the data that will be official. Well, I'm just ahead of them. I guess you are. <laughs> okay. We're, I'm just happy because, you know, f as long as you're not there, everybody talks about you, right? So. When you finally make it, somebody needs to say hooray. And so hooray to the teachers of Hampton and hooray to the principal and anybody else that's doing something that's making it a, bit, a different world for our students. Uh, new uh, school board members, you look exhausted. 
<laughs> it really is. Just wait till we have one of those one o'clockers. <laughs> so we want you to know that you are truly, truly another blessing for us here. We are pleased to have you. Uh, I'm going to be talking to the two of you constantly during the meeting so that you don't get bored and fall asleep. So I've had a great summer in this regard. I also want to make sure, uh, Superintendent, that you get back to me on that $50 uh, deal for lunch. I mean, for um, going over your lunch or breakfast. Um, what did I say? I also want you to know that the school in which I spend a lot of time running back and forth to one of them is Garfield, and they're getting some renewals, and they've had, the building is start, uh, starting to look a little different, so that's a good thing. Thank you very much. Uh, Miniville Elementary School, you won't know it. You just would not know it without, you agree? Absolutely, it is fabulous. It's unfortunate that we can't get a brand new building, but the way they constructed this one, it looks good. So I'm very pleased with that. And I thank you, uh, Superintendent, for that to happen. Um, Bevel, I'm, we're still waiting and to, for them to put in, <clears throat> excuse me, the, um, okay, Mr. Cavitz, what's the name of it that they put in for, <laughs> so that bandwidth, the bandwidth. So I'm still looking for that and I'm waiting on it to show up. I'm, I don't know if Santa Claus is bringing it, but I'm, I'm just waiting for it to show up. And so with that, I think that's about it. Um, and so everybody have a great night. Thank you. Thank you. To be fair, that was Allison Satterway Pryor from the Gainesville District, Gil Trenum from Brentsville, Diane Ralston from Neabsco, and we have Justin Wilk next from the Potomac District. <laughs> Try to be formal here. <laughs> so caught on looking for bandwidth. I'm, I'm looking for bandwidth. <laughs> I'm looking for it too. <laughs> Um, okay, I'll be quick. Uh, a couple back to school nights. Uh, I want to thank both Principal Wright Martinez for Potomac High School, Forest Park High School, did great events. Um, before even that, I was able to visit both those buildings during the teacher work week, and um, I was able to uh, attend a staff um, a lunch with uh, former school board member Betty Covington at Potomac. That was a good event. Uh, we had a good time, and talk with, uh, she talked with old friends and a lot of the faculty that she knows. Uh, also visited uh, a couple buildings throughout the couple of last two weeks, Covington Harper, Grand Park, uh, Swans Creek, and Ashland. So uh, visiting buildings, trying to do as much as I can and be present during the day as well. Uh, I do want to thank uh, Mr. Cavitz for your service. Um, I can't imagine the late nights with some of the last couple of years <laughs> of stories and activities that have been happening. So the service and your dedication, definitely thank you for that. Um, and I wish you and your family the best. So thank you for your service. Um, I do want to give a quick shout out to uh, Mr. Wayne Mallard, who I think has been handling the transportation, um, you know, mm. little things that have come up. I will say that I think it has been a much smoother year. Um, and I think yes. that is a, a, you know, a reflection of also having someone with your stewardship and experience at the helm. So thank you for that. Um, and uh, I think we're good. Have a good night. Lori Williams, Woodbridge District. Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, first, would like to say welcome back to everyone. I hope that um, all of our students and staff have a very successful school year this year. Um, just to start out, of course, I'm over the top elated at uh, the opening of Independence Non-Traditional School. Um, as I mentioned earlier, Mr. Icorn, Dr. Icorn, I'm just going to make you a doctor. Eventually, it'll happen. I know it. Um, uh, is in the audience with us tonight, and I just wanted to say again how um, extremely thankful I am to you and your staff for not only opening the school on time, but for the way that the building looks. Um, we were fortunate enough, those of us who attended, I think everybody uh, was here on the board was in attendance, um, for the way the school is designed, the mottos on the walls, um, the encouraging statements. It's just, if you have not been there, it is an amazing site. Um, I've had the pleasure to speak to two students who actually attend school there, and um, 
one of them just didn't even have the words to express how thankful and appreciative he was of having a school where he felt respected as a student and loved. Um, the other one was just as excited, although he is a graduating senior, so he was just kind of like, yeah, it's cool, and like, it's huge. <laughs> um, so I think he needs a little bit more time to adjust, but he was also excited about the fact that there's transportation to the school, and I just wanted to commend the school board and Dr. Waltz and all the administration facilities, everyone who made this possible. We are leading the state and possibly the nation. I'd love to hear an update on that, uh, Mr. Icorn, whenever you get a chance, if we are the one and only of its kind. I know we are in the state, and I think that it's something to be extremely proud of, of and that we can't speak uh, enough about. Um, moving on from that, I just wanted to thank all of our community organizations, churches, everyone who contributed to our students, providing them school supplies uh, for back to school. I know First Baptist of Woodbridge donated to many of my schools, as well as uh, Ms. Fleming from the David Cobb Foundation, who was able to donate for Fred Lynn. Um, I think that that is something that is a burden sometimes on some of our parents and our families, especially if you have more than one student attending school and the amount of things that they need for back to school. So I'm very appreciative of everyone who comes out to um, help ensure our student success. Uh, then I just wanted to make two special mentions uh, for our first day of school event. I know at uh, Featherstone Elementary, Keller Realty, um, uh, had uh, several men out there who welcomed and greeted the students on the first day of school. Uh, I think that's always an exciting adventure to see uh, uh, being greeted on your first day, especially elementary school. And then I know at Potomac View, uh, members of Kappa Alpha Psi alumni chapter were on hand to greet the students as they arrived for their first day of school. I just think it's a special event anytime you have members of your community taking the time out to welcome our students, especially our little ones, and brighten their day. And it's a nice uh, effort of both the school division and our community organizations. Um, as my fellow board member, Ms. Satter White, mentioned, tomorrow is our first joint board meeting for the governor's school. The governor's school uh, is now on Twitter, so I don't tweet, but I know some of us <laughs> do on the board, and I know many of our students do, so that's a new development and something to follow, the activities, because they do amazing things there and uh, always have something new and interesting to check out. Um, on the line of a welcoming thing, welcoming people, and back to a, a successful school year that I know we're going to have, I am very pleased that year two of our student representatives on the board, yes, I turned into a complete little kid at Christmas when I talk about y'all because it is so exciting to me. I love when students are able to participate in um, governing our school, and I love when we're able to hear um, the voice of our students because you are... Um, why we are here. So it is a, of extreme importance that we take the time needed to listen to your concerns and thoughts and ideas um, because you are our boots on the grounds as well as our staff. And um, I just thank you very much, all three of you, for your willingness to serve on this board. And I'm sure it will be an educational experience <laughs> as the year goes by. Um, so congratulations to all three of you. I hope that we are able to um, spend some time as the year goes by. Um, really cool idea already with the whole student comment thing and the QR things and Snapchat. I don't Snapchat either, but I hear it's really cool. Um, and finally, I just wanted to um, say thank you to a few people at Potomac High School, specifically uh, Mr. Carter, who's one of the counselors. Ms. Woodson, congratulations on being appointed to run the Cambridge program. And um, I as a parent, would probably have lost my mind navigating through senior year and courses and schedules if it wasn't for their assistance. Um, I'm trying my best to highlight uh, when I find a good story or someone has done th something that deserves praise to share when I have board matters. And um, of course, I always have to say thank you to Ms. Griffin. When I saw her, I think she's an outstanding language arts teacher. And when it comes to Ms. Jessie, when you talk about writing, um, she is one of the teachers that I know for a fact has had a tremendous impact in my son's writing abilities. And he's had, him, had her twice, not that he's very happy, but I am. Um, and as to note that he is now taking a dual enrolled English class as a result of having her as a teacher twice. So it goes to show that writing is important and you never know um, how a teacher can impact your student's life. And as a parent, I am just so excited by that. Um, yeah, I think that's it. Welcome back, I'm excited. Mr. Willie Deutsch of the Coles District. 
Thank you. Uh, the start of school is always exciting and a lot of uh, fun events. Uh, of course, uh, following on uh, Ms. Williams' comments, I think one of the most exciting uh, events of this year, and really I think in a lot of ways of the entire term of this board so far is the opening of uh, Independence Non-Traditional School. Uh, when, and building on the work of board before, um, a lot of uh, things that happen here are projects that have taken a long uh, number of years to make happen. Uh, this project's been a long time in, uh, in the works. Uh, but to have a, a school that shows our uh, dedication um, and our commitment to all students, um, and then the, the creativity that went into really every part of that building, um, the different uh, educational rooms, the different um, ways facilities were maximized, the way the rooms were set up uh, with uh, seating and layout and design, uh, every bit of it uh, is designed to maximize the educational opportunities for students. Uh, in an exciting, fun, inspiring, interactive way, uh, and to make sure that every student uh, has the promise of an education uh, and what can really come out as a result of it. And so uh, there have been a lot of things that happened over the last number of years, but I think this uh, building, uh, this school opening, the students that are going to come from it is uh, one uh, incredible uh, capstone of this division, something that everybody here can be proud of. Uh, and I look forward to the ways that we can continue to be visionaries uh, as we all work together to provide exciting things for our students in the future. Uh, one other uh, fun uh, moment was uh, the uh, opening uh, day for the uh, Colgan High School football team. Um, it, was, uh, it was a fun game. I uh, always enjoy being on the sidelines with players and the coaches and seeing everybody. And, um, you know, as much as we have uh, fierce rivalries, uh, they also had a really uh, both cool and impressive moment where uh, they were playing Forest Park and start the game off. Uh, they had Colgan and Forest Park, both marching bands, on the field for a combined national anthem. Um, and it was just a beautiful moment of uh, school unity um, and also just a logistical feat with all the kids they're bringing on and off that field. Um, so it was, it was a lot of fun uh, and a good, good game had by all. Uh, look forward to uh, more back to school nights and football games uh, as uh, everything gets kicked off this year. Um, Miss Jesse and Lily Jesse of the Occoquan District. Hi. Um, First, uh, I did uh, participate in the gang awareness uh, forum uh, with Ms. Anderson, and it was, I think it was informative for a lot of people. It was also informative for me because it's something that we really need to think about, and I want to thank her for allowing me to participate in this particular forum. I want to um, congratulate a Amanda Wilder, who took the new position at Head Start. I, went to their policy meeting. You know, we have a policy meeting once a month, and it was a, such a smooth transition. She's done a wonderful job. Uh, school visitations, I generally try not to go the first day because I remember what it was like for me. Uh, I really didn't have time for you guys to come down the first day, but you guys are so non-intrusive when you come on that first day. But I want to spend some time with... Um, to the buildings, and so this week I've tried to drive to to visit schools. Uh, one, in in a nutshell, and I, as a Vaughn principal, you know I didn't have and I don't know if Amy was there when we didn't have a cafeteria and we brought food across the street. So we had to get a cafeteria, we had to get a library, we had to do the roof, we had to do the air conditioning. So I know facilities and maintenance better than anybody. And I just want to say, looking at Old Bridge, Antietam, Occoquan, and Springfield in the last day or so, they did what I, they've always done for me. They have done a phenomenal job. I, I couldn't believe, although I've been through it, when I looked at Old Bridge, Old Bridge is still having things done, but whoever selected those um, hanging the chandeliers are lights. I don't know if you've seen them. They're beautiful and they're, they're modern and different colors. Uh, it's a, just an added feature. I want to thank you for that. Um, Aquaquan, 
of course, is not having anything done, but I visited that school also. Rock Ledge, Barry Rosenberg was there. It's like old times. Um, they still have some issues, but they're doing well. Uh, the schools, Old Bridge, Antietam, and Springwood, um, I have to tell you that Antietam, you know, and, and I, I hope I don't get in trouble with the parents for this, but I have to tell you that school is beautiful, the, the final product. Uh, I went down the, when I heard about the trees and I went there, my daughters went to attend at Antietam. And I think I was talking to several people, Mr. Iman, I said, have you seen Antietam? And it looked like a desert. It was just flat scary. And then I went back uh, maybe about a month later and it looked better. I was there this week and it is beautiful. The, the sidewalks are there, the grass uh, is in, in, and they're gonna have access. When I was there last year, no, maybe two years ago, they were complaining about the fact that the cars were just all the way down the street. There was no drop-off lane. They now have drop-off lanes and everything. I went to Springwoods. She's excited about the new addition also. So I think everything is going to work out well. I just don't. Nobody wants their kids to leave their schools, so I am not looking forward to the boundary hearings. I think it's going to be take a Tylenol or 10 Tylenols before I go. But it, it was wonderful. Um, First Lady, I talked about her earlier. And this whole idea of preschool education is just so important. And I was pleased to see her there today. Uh, Independence, I want to thank transportation, uh, the building, of course, and the transportation these kids have been coming to school on their own and to provide transportation for them. I know that, Wayne, that must have been a nightmare trying to come up with that schedule. I cannot admit. I think you've gotten grayer. <laughs> Just the two or three weeks you've been here, but you've, you're doing a wonderful job with that particular school. And I want to, Ms. Rep. Pastor Lacey, that Lacey, that dedication room, oh, the artwork in there is just off the hook. Um, and then I think I want to end with, um, I was asked to be on the challenging school committee, um, uh, state challenging school committee. Uh, I want to end with this because it's so important to me that um, when you've seen kids learn that are not supposed to learn at high levels, or when you've seen high level kids learn at an even higher level, you're never the same. So I know I'm the data person, and I know I drive you crazy about data. And I got, haven't gotten my data yet. I've had a miscommunication. So of course, you know me, you people know me, I did my own data. And this is one of the things that I really want to bring to your attention, that we need to talk about student learning, we need to talk about curriculum. and. Uh, the research and I call it R&R, &R, your research and what you see on the ground, reality, says that you accelerate if you want to remediate. When kids are moving at a fast pace, everybody wants to get on board. And when I looked at the scores and I disaggregated the scores, three years of data, the thing that jumped out at, to me was that in the state data and in our data and even the governor's wife said today, the, the reading is dropping. We have to admit the fact that we're pretty much flatlining. We're flatlining at the same level. And when you look at the disaggregation of the data, um, I want to just bring your attention to one thing that struck me. I'm concerned about special ed because 53% of those kids are passing in math, uh, uh, are failing in math, I'm sorry. but. I, I think we really need to look at this advanced data, advanced performance, and what struck me was that the Asian students, 31% of those students in math, for example, are in advance. 22% of white students, so they're below. But only 10% of African Americans, economically disadvantaged, English learners, and students with disability are getting that advanced score. We really do need to kick it up.
And I think that the fact that we're starting this professional learning community training, and I haven't had been able to have a meeting with Ms. Ross, uh, Ms. Goss, but I really do want to meet with you and talk about the data, talk about career education and the PLC training because we really need to move on that. And with that, I think I am out. I am honored to be back. I've been on this board for five years, and um, this is the year that I think, for me, I really want to talk about student learning again, but what are we going to do differently? That's, that's the ending comment that I have. Thank you. I'm going to defer to Lori Williams for just a quick second, and then to Dr. Waltz. I'm sorry for the interruption, Dr. Waltz. I forgot because I, I can't help but I'm just, as I said at the okay. opening, stupid excited about the non-traditional school. Got carried away. But I wanted to make sure to mention um, to Mr. Icorn, I received a letter from Senator Kane's mm -hmm. office congratulating you on the opening of the Independence Non-Traditional School, um, which I unfortunately did not bring with me tonight. Um, and I apologize for that, but I will have at the next board meeting. And... Um, to Mr. Cavett, I just wanted to congratulate you on your retirement. I even wrote it down that I was going to say both of these things, but got carried away. So I just want it would be very remiss if I did not come back and say to you that I'm thankful for your service. I will miss your super awesome announcer voice because you have the smoothest announcer voice in all of Prince William. And I just really appreciate your service and wish you the best on your retirement. Dr. Waltz. Thank you very much. I did not realize until after I had made my comments that this is Mr. Cavett's last school board meeting. So that's a pretty good deal when you go into retirement and you get pre-approved vacation by your immediate supervisor <laughs> before your official retirement day. But that's, that's Phil Cavett's for you. Um, for those of us who work very closely with him, he has a really great sense of humor. Um, albeit sarcastic at some points in time, but uh, he keeps us laughing uh, a lot. But seriously, in that communications group, the rapid fire things that come in on any given day that need immediate attention and response, working with the press, um, and again, you know, a lot of those things are unexpected and you've been a consummate professional. You're great handling the media. You're a great writer. Um, we won't talk about spelling, but you're a great writer. Uh, <laughs> see, I got you back. So <laughs> he gets me once in a while too, trust me. But uh, I do want to say one of the funniest moments at our administrative back to school conference, the Triple E conference, we have this game show that we did a couple years ago, and it's uh, a takeoff of Jeopardy, and it's called Jeopardy with the Triple E, the three E's in there. And uh, we were trying to get the host back, Craig Gefeller, who had done it a couple of years ago, and he's, he's a farmer now, you know, up in New York, so I guess this is apple harvest season, so we weren't able to get him. And then Phil suggested Gail Hubbard, which is a tremendous stand-up comedian, and uh, that wasn't able to happen, so Phil says to me one day, well, I'm just going to do it myself. And I said, you think you can be funny on stage? He said, yeah, I guarantee it. I, I, yeah, I'll, I'll be fine. And he gets up there, and it was a hilarious moment because he said he never dreamed in his entire life that he would be able to get up and MC the Jeopardy show. And, of course, uh, there's some kind of testy little funny things uh, in there about, you know, things like the popularity of the Kronos system and, you know, so he posed the questions, but uh, did a great job with that. But thank you for all the work behind the scenes and all the work in front of the cameras. Uh, you're a great professional and uh, we're very proud to have worked with you and appreciate all that you did. Thank you. Come on, dude. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, I, well, I will make it fast, and I appreciate 
<laughs> I appreciate all of you all for um, for for staying making it around. quick and 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 staying around for all of us. A um, couple things. Welcome back to the new school year, 2018-2019 school year. I'm excited. Um, to all the students out there, welcome back. Um, I got to attend a bunch of commencements last year and saw some tremendous success, and I'm excited to see your success as you go through this year, especially our seniors. Um, for our parents coming back, back to school nights are coming up, please attend them. If you can't attend them, try to get the information from a neighbor or you know, call over to the principal's office in, in your school and try to get as much information as you can. Take it, all the opportunities you can to learn as much as you can about what the school offers, what the teachers are offering, and what opportunities are available. Join the PTOs, join your boosters, go to your football games, basketball games, support your schools. It makes the whole community work a lot better. Um, I want to thank the First Lady of the Commonwealth of Virginia, uh, Pam Northam, for coming to Featherstone Elementary today. She came, she highlighted her work in pre-K education and looked at one of our tremendous programs at Featherstone Elementary. We're very excited to have her. We're excited to work with her and the governor's office on any uh, priorities they have. And uh, we're excited to um, continue to lobby them for resources we need here in the county to get the things we want done, done. Um, I'd like to thank the Senators um, uh, Stanley, Suravel, and uh, Marsdan for coming over to Fredland Elementary yesterday and taking a look at uh, some of our needs there and, and trying to think about ways to incorporate our needs into their bill coming up in this year's General Assembly. Um, you know, as chairman, I am highly focused on student success. I appreciate Lily Jesse. I appreciate all the board members. You are the conscience to the board that um, uh, has to keep us honest and make sure, you know, we're doing the work we need to do for the students in the classroom. And I will promise to continue to work hard to make sure we're doing everything we can for every student to make sure we're having the success in the classroom at all levels, trying to raise the bar for everyone. And I'm deeply committed to that, and I will work with each of you to do that. Um, and I'm excited to, you know, that we're implementing our safety and security programs. I'm excited to see, you know, as I've been chair, I'm trying to visit all 98 schools. I'm trying to do 98 schools in 98 days. I'll do it either back to school nights, commencements, this, that. But we're really working hard to get around. And I'm excited to see our safety and security measures that are being implemented. I'm excited to see the way our principals are handling um, reassuring our public and our students and the number of drills that your kids are put through are a lot but frankly it's those drills that will help us you know when the time comes if the time comes God forbid um, space and infrastructure fantastic summer of construction fantastic summer of remodeling excited to see what's going on there as you know it's a big county that's constantly growing and we're always trying to keep up Thank you so much for all of that, for everyone on the facility staff and, and around the county. And I'm also committed to working with all of our staff to make sure we're doing the best we can. Um, I want to commend Dr. Waltz for your, you know, um, working with the, um, um, adding the times into next year for days off. I think that was a good commitment, um, you know, adding on the days and, and Gil for supporting that and, and promoting, you know, kinds of ways to find ways where we can give back to our teachers and our staff in, in more creative ways, and to find and, and I appreciate your spirit on that and your continual um, you know push for that. Thank you to the entire board for working hard this summer um, on all the revisions and the policy changes. We have a lot more work to do, and uh, and I'll thank you in advance for all of that. Folks, have a great night. Tonight's meeting is adjourned. Thank you.